Hi everyone! In this video I will show you how I built this plywood boat from start to finish. I will show you what methods and materials I used, how long it took to build the boat, and some recommendations I have for you if you want to do a similar project. My boat is based on a design by Tim Weston called the Twentin. It's 3.4 meters long, 1.5 meters wide, and the final weight was about 80 kilograms. The boat has a planing hull and is suitable for motors of around 6 horsepower. Okay, let's start with the construction of the boat. The first thing to do is to join some sheets together. This must be done because the boat is longer than a single sheet. I put the two sheets to be joined on top of each other and used an electric hand planer to chamfer the edges. This ensures that the chamfer angle is the same at both sheets. To glue the sheets together you use epoxy. Epoxy is very strong and also has very good gap filling capabilities. First I painted the surfaces to be joined with normal epoxy to wet the plywood. Then I used thickened epoxy and spread it on. It should be a peanut butter consistency. I put some weight on the joint and let it dry overnight. I needed to do three joints in total, so this took some time. When all sheets are ready, the profiles can be cut out. I started marking vertical lines every two decimeters on all sheets. This makes it much easier to transfer the drawing from the paper to the plywood. Then you just need to mark out all the points and draw lines between them. This will take quite some time as well. Of course it's very important that all dimensions are accurate, otherwise the boat won't fit together. I used a jigsaw to cut out the profiles. As you can see in this picture, the previously made joint looks very good. When all the pieces of the hull has been cut out, you can start attaching them into the final shape of the boat. This is probably the most exciting part, because it's quite quick actually, and you can see your boat taking shape. I attached all profiles to a table. This makes it easier to work. Then I started attaching the hull pieces. I worked from the inside out, so the innermost pieces I fastened first. I used small metal brackets and screws to hold the pieces together temporarily. The bow has a quite aggressive bend, and I was actually afraid that the plywood would break. I left some weights on it overnight to relax the strain in the material. By using quite a lot of the metal brackets, I got it bent all the way. Now when all of the hull pieces are attached, all voids and cracks between the pieces must be filled with thickened epoxy. I used a spatula to just jam the epoxy into the voids. I let the epoxy cure overnight, and then I flipped the boat to work on it from the inside. To strengthen all the joints, you need to make epoxy fillets. The round shape of the fillets will help distribute the forces that are acting on all the joints. As you can see, the bow is very pointy. And as we all know, pointy stuff can be very dangerous. So I had to do a little plastic surgery. When all the epoxy has cured, you can remove the metal brackets and start the sanding. Now, sanding is not the most fun thing in the world, but if you want your boat to look nice in the end, you need to do a good job with a sander. When all surfaces are sanded smooth, you can apply the first coats of epoxy. The plan is to coat all surfaces of the wood with epoxy to make the boat completely waterproof. Here I am putting fiberglass strips on all seams in the hull. The fiberglass makes all joints very strong. When the fiberglass seams have cured, we can test the boat in the water for the first time. Now it's time to build the interior of the boat. In the stern I decided to build this contraption. It moves the seat a bit further back and stiffens up the back of the boat. In the original plans there was a kind of bonnet in the front, but I decided I wanted a seat instead, and under the seat there will be a dry compartment for storing stuff. Under the aft seat you can also store things, but it will not be a waterproof compartment. I added fiberglass on the joints on the inside of the hull as well. I started painting the aft compartment 
before gluing on the seats, as it would be very hard to reach otherwise. Here is the waterproof door for the front compartment. As I didn't want to screw into the plywood, I just epoxied it into place. For the railing I used thin spruce planks, and I glued three of them on each side. I put the railing on the inside of the boat, as I think this gives the boat a very sleek look. However, it is a bit harder to carry, and also a bit more prone to splashing, because the waves can just travel up the sides of the boats unhindered. The motor mounting plate is made from larch, which is very tough wood that does not rot easily. It also has a very nice reddish color. I used two planks, one on each side, and it was almost too thick for my motor. However, it is very strong and sturdy. I put three of these stainless hooks on the boat. I think they are called bow eyes. I put one in the bow and two in the stern. Here I am drilling holes for oar locks. The boat will mostly be used as a motor boat, but if the motor breaks down, it is nice to have the possibility to row. The oar lock holders were just epoxied into place. I hope I never have to replace them, because they are quite stuck. Now the boat is almost finished and it's painting time. I used two part polyurethane paint. This paint gives a hard and waterproof surface, and as I understand it, it's a popular paint for boats. I chose two different colors. The inside of the boat is gray and the outside is white. This is after one layer of paint and as you can see, the coverage is not very good. In total, I put on two layers of paint on both sides and it required about one liter of paint per side of the boat. To transport the boat to the sea, we actually put it on top of our car because we don't have any boat trailer. The boat weighs about 80 kilograms, so it can be put on a car if you have some people to help you. To get the outboard motor in a better angle, I had to install these thin wood pieces. As you can see in this picture, the transom is completely vertical, while my motor has a design for a transom that is tilted a bit. So it was quite impossible to get a perfect trim. Okay, we're getting close to the end of the video and I'm just gonna summarize a bit what I've learned and uh, my thoughts on this project. Plywood boats can be built quite quickly. I built my boat over the summer and worked on it quite intensively for some weeks. I didn't 
document how long time it took to build a boat, but I would approximate the work to about 200 hours. A plywood boat can also be made very lightweight, especially if the right materials are used. We weighed my boat when it was finished, and it weighed 88 kilograms. This is not super lightweight, but uh, the boat is quite large as well. Um, you could shave off maybe 20 kilograms of the total weight if you used thinner plywood sheets and less wood in the construction overall. I didn't cover the bottom of the boat with fiberglass, however this is something I recommend you do if you build your own boat. If you don't have fiberglass on your boat, the only thing protecting the plywood is the epoxy layer itself. And if your boat runs into a stone or something sharp, this epoxy layer is very easily pierced. As you can see in this picture, I ran my boat over a sharp object, which exposed the plywood. This is not very hard to fix, but it is annoying, and if you don't fix it, your boat will get destroyed quite quickly. That was everything from me in this video. I hope you liked it. And let's see each other on the next project!